G'day everyone, it's Matt Paul here again and in this tutorial I'll be showing you AudioFuse 16 Rig's software counterpart, that AudioFuse Control Center or AFCC. We'll go through its various functions and see how you can use it to control the hardware. Note that most of the features shown here can also be done directly from the hardware itself. Our first tutorial covers this in detail so if you haven't seen that video already, make sure to check that out as well. Let's dive in. While the majority of the AudioFuse 16 rig's functions are accessible through the front panel of the hardware, you might find that it's easier to manage the hardware through AudioFuse Control Center since you can see everything more easily on a larger computer screen. AudioFuse Control Center lets you do everything from setting gain and monitoring levels, to channel configurations, to MIDI control setups. Using the mixer can be much easier since you can see everything much more easily. And, most importantly, there are a few things that can only be managed through the AudioFuse Control Center software such as the audio routing matrix. We'll cover this part in detail later in the video. At the very top of the screen, you'll find the upper toolbar. At the far left of this toolbar, we have the AudioFuse Control Center menu. Clicking this opens a drop menu offering resizing options for different resolution computer monitors, access to the AudioFuse Control Center manual, as well as an about page displaying the AudioFuse Control Center's version number. At the center of the upper toolbar, you'll find five page selector icons, these icons determine what is shown below the toolbar. The pages include I.O. settings, the main mixer, the Q mixer, the routing matrix, and the MIDI-related parameters. Your current selection is highlighted in blue. Next, we have preset controls. Here you can name, load, and save presets. To the right, you'll find drop menus for sample rate and clock source settings. And finally, we have the gear icon at the top right. It opens a pop-up menu with three tabs, Audio Settings, Preferences, and Firmware Update. The Audio Settings tab has sections covering clocking, monitoring, and the configuration of the AB speaker switching function. The Preferences tab covers monitoring related controls including clipping reset time and orange color threshold level. It also lists the product's serial number and lets you name your device which is handy if you have multiple AudioFuse products connected to one computer. The Firmware Update tab is where you can see your current firmware version and to update it if you're not already on the latest version. Now let's dive into the five different pages. The I.O. page offers a comprehensive overview of the AudioFuse 16 rig's inputs and outputs, complete with level meters and other control settings. The upper left section of the overview screen has VU meters and controls for all of the AudioFuse 16 rig's analog inputs. Each input has a level meter, stereo link button, gain control, and buttons for pad and phase. The first four inputs have connectors on both the front and back of the hardware. If you connect something to a front panel input, the system assumes you want to record that input and ignores the rear panel connection. The rear button tells the system to continue listening to the rear input even if something is connected to the front. This is extremely handy because it means you can leave devices connected to both the front and back panel inputs and instantly switch between them. Note that the interface detects when front panel connections are made and automatically shows or hides on-screen options depending on what is connected. For example, inputs 1 and 2 display a 48V button for phantom power only if an XLR cable is connected to the front panel. Alternatively, an INST button appears only if a quarter inch jack is connected to the front panel. Click the INST button if you've connected a high impedance instrument like an electric guitar or bass. Leave it switched off if you've connected a line level device like a synth to the front. The ADAT inputs section at the upper right of the I.O. page shows 16 level meters for the ADAT digital inputs. These meters provide a visual reference of incoming signals but do not have any editable controls. The lower left part of the I.O. page includes controls and level meters for all analog outputs including monitor, phones, and line outputs. Line outputs have meters, a stereo link button to link adjacent channels, and an output level control. The monitor output pair has controls for mute, dim, mono, and AB functions, mirroring those on the hardware. Note that if the AB monitoring function isn't enabled, the AB button here will be grayed out and inactive. You can switch on AB monitoring in the configuration menu, and we have a separate video covering this in detail. Analog outputs 3 and 4 on the front panel of the hardware have some special functions that they can perform. You can select that function using the drop menu found under Analog Outputs 3 and 4 in AudioFuse Control Center. The special functions include Line, Reamp, Direct Through, and Old Phones. These are covered in the AudioFuse 16 rig hardware tutorial, so have a look there to learn more. 
Note that a ground lift switch is available when reamp is selected. This eliminates potential ground loop hum when connecting the AudioFuse 16 rigs front panel outputs to guitar amps and other equipment. Finally, the lower right part of the I.O. page provides output level metering for the stereo loopback and all 16 ADAT digital outputs. Like the ADAT inputs, these meters provide a visual reference of outgoing signals but do not have any editable controls. On the main mixer page, you get to see the main mix in action. You can set all these parameters through the hardware itself, but it's easier through the AudioFuse control center since you have a larger computer monitor and can see everything at a glance. When you first open the screen, it might look something like this. You'll find the mixer's master section controls on the right. Here's what they do. The large fader controls the main mixer's overall output level. The nearby meters show your levels while the numerical displays above show your recent peaks in DBFS. Above the master fader, you'll find controls for aux 1 to 4. Each section has a level meter, a knob to set the overall output level of that aux, a mute button and a pre button if you need pre fader listening. If you need a stereo aux bus, click the link icon to join channels 1 and 2, as well as 3 and 4 into a stereo bus. Now let's add some channels to the mixer. Click the plus minus channels button just above the master fader. You'll see a pop-up appear containing all available inputs, both in mono and stereo. Just click on a channel to add it and click again once you want to remove it. Once you've made your choices, click anywhere outside the pop-up to close it. Your mixer screen will now look something like this. From top to bottom, each channel has aux send knobs with mute buttons for each aux send. Below that, you have panning controls, mute and solo buttons, and finally a fader with metering and a clip indicator. The Q Mixer page is identical to the main mixer page in features and operation aside from the lack of aux buses. The only other notable difference is that there's a Q button above the master fader that lets you temporarily switch the Q mix on or off. Be sure this is switched on if you're using the Q mixer. The AudioFuse 16 rig comes with an extensive array of inputs and outputs, presenting a multitude of choices when routing signals. This routing matrix page lets you connect any of your sources, shown along the top in orange, to any of the available destinations shown in the left column in purple. Connecting a source to a destination is as simple as clicking at the intersection where the source and the destination meet in the grid. Note that a source can be connected to as many destinations as you like, but a destination can only have one source. The system makes destinations only have one source and your active connections are shown in blue. Let's take a closer look at the sources. Starting from the left, we have analog, which is the interface's 16 analog inputs, ADAT1 and ADAT2, which are the 16 digital inputs, USB returns, which are the 32 outputs of your door, main, which is the stereo output of the main mixer, aux 1 to 4, which are the four aux sends of the main mixer, and Q, which is the stereo output of the Q mixer. Due to the substantial number of sources, displaying everything on one screen would make things really hard to see. For that reason, the sources are shown in two groups. One group is always visible while the other group is collapsed into a single column to save space. If you'd like to open up a collapsed group, click its header or any of the buttons in the collapsed column. The first group includes analog, ADAT1 and ADAT2, while the second group shows all the USB inputs. And now let's look at the destinations. The destinations are listed in a column at the left side of the screen. To make the table easier to read, we've grouped them as monitor, phones, analog, ADAT1, ADAT2 and USB. Pro tip, if you're not using a destination group, you can collapse that group into a single row by clicking on its header. This saves space and makes it easier to see the parts of the matrix that you want to see. This screen lets you configure MIDI-related parameters of the AudioFuse 16 rig. At the top left, you'll find the MIDI configuration section. Here you can set whether the hardware operates in hosted or standalone mode. And if you intend to control the main mixer via MIDI, you can select what port the mixer responds to using the mixer control drop menu. Both of these drop menus are covered in detail in the AudioFuse 16 rig hardware tutorial video, so have a look there if you'd like to learn more. In the middle, you'll find the standalone MIDI section. This section lets you specify the routing of MIDI inputs to MIDI outputs when AudioFuse 16 rig is operating in standalone mode. Use the drop menus to connect any of the available sources to a destination. Note that if the audio interface is working in hosted mode, 
all inputs are sent to your DAW to be routed. This means your computer is in charge of routing and settings here in the standalone MIDI section are ignored until you switch back to standalone mode. At the upper right corner of the screen, you'll see the MIDI activity monitor. The blinking indicators in this section that you know when signals are being sent or received from AudioFuse 16 rig. We've covered this in the AudioFuse 16 rig hardware tutorial, so have a look there to learn more. And finally, we have the main mixer MIDI mapping section. AudioFuse 16 rig has a very unique MIDI controllable main mixer. This means you can use a MIDI controller, like any of our Keylab keyboards products, to get hands-on control over the mixer. This can be really cool if you're performing live on stage or doorless jamming at home because one, you don't need to buy a separate mixer and two, you can play the mixer like an instrument and get more interesting sounds and performances. AudioFuse 16 Rig's default MIDI mapping for the main mixer matches the default MIDI mapping of our Keylab controllers. This means if you have a Keylab with its original MIDI settings, you can connect it to AudioFuse 16 Rig's front panel MIDI USB port and start using it right away. Just remember to set mixer control to USB host and you'll see the faders and knobs already control the main mixer. However, if you have a different brand of controller, you can remap the AudioFuse 16 rigs main mixer to respond to MIDI commands generated by your controller. This section is where you can do the remapping, but we'll also cover this in a separate video. And that's it. We hope this video has helped you understand AudioFuse Control Center and how it can help you speed up your work with AudioFuse 16 rig. For more content like this, make sure to check out our other tutorials and how-to videos. And if you liked it, leave a thumbs up plus subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.